Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us from the Ohio Agnet. Voice you know with the News You Trust studio, sponsored by Grain Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Dale Menyo. Well, effective October 31st for trade date November 1st, 2024, the Chicago Board of Trade and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Inc. will reset price limits for grain and oilseed futures, according to a recent news release. The second of two CME price limit resets for this year takes effect November 1, 2024. This is the second of the two price limit resets in 24 that is stipulated by the variable price limits mechanism pursuant to each product's respective rulebook chapter, stated the news release. Corn futures price limit will stay at 30 cents per bushel with an extended price limit at 45 cents per bushel. Oats futures price limit will stay at 25 cents per bushel with an extended price limit of 40 cents per bushel. The soybean futures price limit will go from 85 cents per bushel to 70 cents with an extended price limit of $1.05 per bushel. Soybean oil futures price limit will go from 0.035 per pound to 0.030 with an extended price limit at 0.045 per pound. Soybean meal futures price limit will go from $25 per ton to $20 with an extended price limit at $30 per ton. Chicago wheat futures and Kansas City wheat futures price limit will stay at 40 cents per bushel with an extended price limit at 60 cents per bushel. Back in 2014, the CME Group put a new percentage-based daily price limit procedure in the Chicago Board of Trade grain and oil seeds products, including corn, soybeans, CBOT wheat, Kansas City wheat, soybean meal, soybean oil, oats, and rough rice. The CME noted the new methodology is a more flexible, transparent, and market-based price limit setting mechanism. It would allow price limits to expand under high prices, but also allow price limits to retract when prices fall. Basically, the new variable price limit mechanism will allow higher limits when prices are higher and lower limits when prices are low. The new variable price limit mechanism resets price limits in each of the CBOT grain and oilseed futures contracts every six months, with the first reset date being the first trading day of May, according to the CME. Today's weather brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Here's the forecast. One more dry day across Ohio, and then we see a little bit of moisture trying to work in here. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin. Let's take a look at your forecast update. Now, this one more dry day is going to be another near record breaker as we continue to see very strong southwest flow, very warm air. You know, yesterday was warm. Today is going to be doggone close to it, and we do see sunshine through most of the day. We are looking at some clouds building through the overnight tonight, and that's ahead of the frontal boundary that shows up tomorrow. Your Halloween front likely bringing anywhere from a quarter to one inch of rain. Coverage around 90% of the Buckeye State, and I do think it even takes a thunderstorm or two to get into the upper end of that range near one inch. I think most of us are going to be half an inch or less. We'll just have to see how it plays out. We dry down for Friday, and we see a dry Saturday as well as high pressure sets right over the top of us. Clouds increase to Sunday afternoon. Scattered rain showers here overnight Sunday night through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Several waves of moisture coming through in that period. All in, all done, anywhere from a half to one and a half inches with coverage at 100% of the Buckeye State. We are cool behind it or cooler with sunshine coming back and see very cold air coming in out of Canada across the entirety of the Great Plains as we hit the end of next week. I think that filters our direction for the weekend of the 9th and 10th. That's the way your forecast is stacking up. I'm meteorologist Ryan Martin. Joining me, Brad Miller, technical agronomist for Northeast Ohio, and we're talking about Asgru Decal products. Let's talk about soybeans today, Brad. Did we learn some things about variety selection, soybeans, the fields? What all can we take from this year's unusual weather patterns and so on? Yeah, Dale, we did learn several things. The weather patterns really changed some of the outcomes of the plans that we made. I'd say over 80% of the beans are now complete as far as harvest goes. 
what we saw this year is probably a little better performance in the 2.6 to 3.3 maturity range, where a lot of times we see the better performance in the 3.3 to 3.8 range. So that tells me is that still want to play a package of product from early to late maturity for next year because we really don't know what next year's weather will bring us. But that was interesting this year at that mid maturity group from 2.6 to 3.3 really outperformed some of the other maturity ranges. Some of the challenges we saw this year on soybeans was weed control from residuals because of lack of moisture. So we didn't have quite enough rainfall in some areas to activate those herbicides. Something to do to plan against that next year would be to make sure you're layering your residuals. Not only put a residual down pre-emerge, but also come back early post with a second application of a residual herbicide like warrant so that we can help weatherproof that weed control program. The other challenge we saw this year on soybeans was some harvest loss. That was due to very dry grain at harvest time, 8-9% grain moisture. So we saw a lot of head shatter, and there's really nothing we can do there to avoid that other than try to harvest when grain moisture is a little bit higher in that around that 13-14% grain moisture. As we think about next season, what this nice open fall weather is going to provide us with is a nice window to apply herbicides for fall weed control. So we can control some of those winter annuals and perennial weed. The nice open fall here gives us a lot more time to get those type of applications and workload done. The other thing is people ask, you know, what products should we plant for next year? What I'm seeing as some of the top performers in our ASGRO lineup this year were products like 26XF4, 27XF3, 30XF4, and 33XF3. And if you're looking for something a little bit later in the 3.6 maturity, I would go with 36XF4. There you go. Lots of things to think about. My guest today, Brad Miller from Asgrow DeKalb. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service announced an investment of more than $265 million to conserve nearly 335,000 acres of ecologically and economically significant forest lands across the nation. In partnership with states across the country, thanks to funding from President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, the Forest Service will fund 21 projects in 17 states to conserve working forests that support rural economies. In 2024 alone, the Forest Service has invested nearly $420 million to conserve more than 500,000 acres through the Forest Legacy Program and since 2021 has invested more than $758 million in 123 projects. Local communities and our country as a whole depend on private forests to provide clean water, habitat, recreation, and jobs, said Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack. Landowners face many pressures to convert forests to other uses, and this investment is key to keeping the economic, social, and ecological benefits that these forests provide. Projects selected include an $8.2 million investment for the Sunfish Creek Project. It will acquire 3,125 acres of forest land, expanding the adjacent Pike State Forest in Ohio's scenic Appalachian Hills. The project will help expand a national and statewide hiking trail system, support the critical forest industry, and protect waterways and domestic water supply. These increased benefits are expected to produce upwards of $2 million annually for Pike County, Ohio. Stay tuned back with more after this. Hi everyone, this is Dale Minio from the Ohio Agnet. For a quarter of a century, I powered my truck with biodiesel traveling the state promoting agriculture. Biodiesel is a reliable, high performance fuel that works in any diesel engine without modification. The best part is that with every mile driven, I'm fueling the economy, doing good for the environment, and supporting soybean farmers. Learn how using biodiesel can add value to every bushel of soybeans grown at soyohio.org. AmeriHealth Caritas Ohio is your Medicaid plan for more. More benefits, more rewards. We know that good health means more than just seeing a doctor when you're sick. Eligible members can receive extras like home-delivered meals and family essentials, like baby carriers and kids' school supplies. Members can even earn rewards for playing mobile health trivia games. Learn more at AmeriHealthCaritasOH.com and call the Ohio Medicaid Consumer Hotline at 1-800-324-8680 to choose AmeriHealth Caritas Ohio. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources 2025 Summer Intern Program application is now open. Approximately 70 paid college internship positions are available. 
If you love exploring the great outdoors and are looking for a summer college internship, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources might be the right place for you. The 2025 Summer College Intern Program is accepting applications now through Sunday, December the 15th. Applicants can apply for the following categories. Administration Communications Operations, recommended majors will be things like accounting, business, environmental education, and so on. Engineering and Survey Category, Graphic Design, Photography, and Videography. Cultural History and Archives, Library Science, Science Majors. Also, candidates must be enrolled in college, must have at least a 2.5 GPA, Candidates must include a writing sample. A writing sample can be a research paper or writing assignment and is generally one to two pages in length. The topic should be relevant to the internship to which the applicant is seeking. Please note, resumes do not count as writing samples. Time now for the Louis Dreyfus Grain Analysis brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. Here's Ryan Martin. Grain markets finished mixed on Tuesday. We had corn a little bit higher, wheat big time higher, and soybeans a little bit lower. Let's start with the wheat markets. That's where a lot of the action was. Kansas City wheat up 12 to 13, spring wheat up 11 to 12, and soft red winter wheat, our local wheat, up eight and a half to 11 and three quarters. Main reason, the low U.S. crop rating that was out yesterday, uh, yesterday, or rather Monday, uh, Monday was the first good to excellent to sets of rating numbers out of the U.S. wheat belt. And, um, boy, I tell you what, it was not necessarily a very good set of numbers. Not very much of the U.S. For, uh, forecast area is looking at very good crop ratings right now. Uh, worse than expected crop readings. Soybeans were down on the profit taking in the absence of export sales announcements. Corn uh, wanted to follow the wheat higher overall. Right now, the wheat will probably be camped a little bit by rising Russian cash wheat market. That will be something that we need to watch overall. Paris rapeseed, canola is what we call it around here, rallied yesterday as well as supply and demand projects a pretty tight supply balance sheet overall. Uh, it's not necessarily a meaningful issue but for soybeans, but it's something to watch on the veg oil market overall. Speaking of oil seeds, we were hearing the headlines. Yes, you've heard them, and we're hearing them too, that certain biofuels producers and uh, grain buyers are backing off on purchases of soybeans because of the lack of any kind of clarity on what 45Z will do. Now, I don't think that's a region-wide big issue. I think the ag media is probably spinning the story bigger than it truly is, but it's catching the eye of those in farm country. We want to address it here. Dreyfus is not pulling back at all. I'm Ryan Martin. And thanks, Ryan. Today's market's brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Let's recap yesterday's close quickly. December corn up three at 413 and three quarters. November beans 965 and one quarter, down eight and three quarters. And next July wheat up nine and a half at $6.07 and one quarter cent. Let's turn to the overnight now. December corn, $4.13, down three quarters. March down three quarters, 426 and one quarter. And May also down three quarters at 434 and a quarter cent. The November beans are up three and three quarters, trading 969. January up three and three quarters at 982 and three quarters. March consistently up three and three quarters also at 997 and a quarter cent. December wheat, 572 and three quarters, up two and one quarter. March, 592 and a half, up two. And July new crop, $6.08, up three quarters. In livestock, October cattle down 87 yesterday at 189.30. December down a dollar and 32 cents at 187.95. December lean hogs, $82.82. .82 up two dollars and twenty cents. The February up a dollar fifteen at eighty five thirty seven. Lean hogs for April eighty seven seventy seven up sixty five cents. November feeder cattle down two dollars and sixty cents at two forty six sixty. And January feeder cattle at two 
4402. That's down two dollars and ninety-two cents. Thanks for joining us. This is the Ohio Agnet.